Alright, hey guys, welcome to part one, or the actual first part, of how to set up a media server on an old computer. The first thing we're going to need to do is download Lubuntu. That's the operating system we're going to be having run the server. Here is a download page right here. There are a bunch of different versions. All you need to look for is under standard PC. It should have a 32-bit standard image disk. Right next to it there will be a torrent file. Don't worry about that. Just click this, 32-bit. If you know what 64-bit is and you know you have a 64-bit computer, you can use a 64-bit version, but for if you don't know or you're not sure, just use 32. It's the safest bet. Now, let that download, you can go ahead and do that. I already have it downloaded. All right, so the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to be able to burn a disk, uh, uh, IMG file to a disk. You might be like, oh, well, I can already burn files. No, this is different. We're bur for burning an image file, it's, you have to use special programs. So what we're going to use here is called image burn. You can al There'll also be a link to this coming up on the screen or something somewhere. I say choose Mirror 7, which is provided by Image Burn, so you don't have to go to like, any other websites. Just click that, and it'll download the Image Burn setup. I've already done that too. Cancel. Now when you, I don't know if it just messed up my computer, because I think it should still be recording. Okay, um, it popped up with the little ask for administrator rights thing. Um, we're installing image burn. Just use all the default options. You have to agree. Um, yes, use desktop and stuff, and to default folder. I already have it installed, but when you install it, it will open up like this. I'm quitting, because like I said, I already installed it. Uh, IMG. It will pop up like this, and then from here, it will detect what drive you have that's a burner. Click Write Image to Disk, and it will pop up like this. If you don't have anything in your disk tray, it will say Disk Not Empty, or if you have a disk that's not writable, it will still say Disk Not entry, Empty. Click here to browse to your file, and then go to where you downloaded it and click on it. It will like show up as one of these type of files. I already downloaded it and wrote it to a disk. So once you do that, all you have to do is just click this one button right here, which is not high. It will be highlighted once it detects that there's a blank CD in your drive. I've already ran it, so it's not going to show up for me. Once it's done, um, if you're using a laptop, it will give you an error message saying it, uh, if you have verify turned on. Verify means it checks the disk to make sure what was burnt, what you burned to the disk is actually what you wanted. So if you have Verify turned on you have a laptop, it will eject the tray, but it won't be able to pull it back in. So you have to push it back in manually, then press OK. So once it's done, you'll have your disk file. Where did I put mine? Here it is. You have your disk file. Not your disk file. You have your actual disk. So this is what we're going to need to put in our computer. I'll show you what the computer will be like when it starts up. Okay, I'll need to switch over to my other setup for that. So, hold on one second while I switch over to, to the uh, other setup. Alright, hey YouTube, I'm back and now I'm going to actually show you how to set up a server. We got the CD set up and you should have put it in your computer right now. I will now show you how to boot off the CD so we can get started installing the operating system we will use for the media server. Let's get started. This is my virtual computer. Um, so, it's the same as, it's going to be the same setup as yours, it's just going to look a little bit different for me. Alright, when your computer first starts up, you should see like a logo like that, and it might have some numbers or something you need to press. If you get, if it, okay, real quick, let's see if I can stop that. This is a screen that you should get. This is what you should be looking at. If you don't look, if you're not looking at this, that probably means your computer may not be set up to boot from CD. If that is how your computer is set up, then we'll ha I'll have to show you how to manually boot from CD. If you see this, just um, skip this next part that I'm showing you. Um, here's what you do if you do not see uh, if you do not see the Lubuntu thing pop up. I'm gonna restart my computer. And so you see around here it says what press F12. Um, it might say something different for you. Uh, you want to push that button, and it should bring up a boot list of diff a list of different devices you can boot from. So I'm gonna press F12. And you might have a menu you can scroll through, but I just have numbers. As you can see here, it's number 1, F, C, and L. And from here, you want to choose a thing that says CD or disk drive or anything you have to do with a compact disk or CD ROM. For that, I press C. And when I'm pressing C, uh, don't worry about this, it'll bring up this. This is the different language options. I just say go ahead and do English. So make sure there's nothing else on this hard drive you want because we're going to be completely deleting the hard drive that is currently in your computer. 
So if you have any files in it, like if it's an old computer and you have any files on it, I highly suggest you make some backups. We will now be starting up the installer. All right, now we're at the welcome screen. More language options again. We're just going to go ahead. We're going to use English as my native speaking language. We go ahead and click OK. Scroll this down so you can see it. All right. So here are the first the things that you need. Uh, is we have to have at least 4.4 gigabytes of storage space on a hard drive. Good. Uh, we have to be plugged into a power source. This is if you're using a laptop. Uh, I don't know why I use a laptop for media server. I guess it would be low power or something. We're good with that, and we don't have to be connected to the internet, but we it makes it easier so you can install updates and stuff. It says this computer is not currently hooked up to the internet. That's okay. So we'll go ahead and do continue, and it should give us the uh, installation options. All right, this is the best option. It will erase everything that's on your hard drive and just le and just put um, Lubuntu on there, and Lubuntu or L yeah Lubuntu, I guess that's how to pronounce, will be what we're using to host a media server. So. Choose the first option unless you know what you're doing. And it will begin to install the operating system. And then after a few seconds, it will actually have us setting up our information. Here you go. Time zone. I'm going to say New York. You can pick whatever one you can, you want by clicking on it. No, I'm not really sure. How you, there you go. New York. Just click on your general area and it should take you there. And keyboard layout, just leave this unless you know what you specifically know you have a different type of keyboard. And here is our account information. Uh, doesn't really matter what you choose here, but it's best to do something that you'll remember. Okay, that was weird. So for my name, I'm going to do... Dave, David Matthews, and for on, for a computer name, the default thing will be whatever your computer's model is. Uh, but we can just call this media server. Oh, sorry, media server. Pick a username. I'm just going to do Bob.exe has to be all lowercase and choose a password this is important because you'll need this when you're going to if you're going to remotely copy over any files to the server or if you just want to have um, it protected so other people can't you know m go up to your computer and change stuff I think they require a six digit password at least so I'll type in something right now it will measure the strength of your password oops sorry And then your it will say if you if you have at least sixteen, I think you need a number in there or something, whatever. I usually have login automatically turned on because I don't have that many people in my house who I think would actually mess it up. But if you have if you think if, it's just an extra security measure by turning that off, but I'm just gonna leave it on. Basically, login automatically means that your computer will automatically log in to your user account every time it started up. It makes things a lot easier down the line. But if you don't want to, you can just turn that off. That means that when you start the computer, you'll have to type in your username and password, just like you, like, just like you have to do when you have most Windows computers. All right, um, password required to login is the other option. That's the login screen from window, like Windows and stuff that you have. Encrypt home folder. You don't need this. We're not going to be using the home folder, um, and you don't really need encryption on a media server. So we'll go ahead and click continue. It should have all the information entered and it will just give you a demonstration of the different things you can do with Lubuntu. Most of which we will not be using since we're just using it as a media server. Here we go. It's fast, lightweight. And then showing you all the cool stuff about it. But like I said, we're not going to be using hardly any of this stuff because we're just going to be because you're not even going to be looking at it. It's going to be a media server. So even though you have Linux installed, you won't you won't even have to look at it. So it's almost like it's not even there. Okay, so I will pause the video now and I will come back on when it's done installing.
Oh, sorry, I forgot I had my microphone off. Anyway, restart your computer. And now I just took out the disk. And then when your disk is out, you can, rest you can start up your computer again. Alright, here we go. Boots up very fast. But for the first time, it might take a little bit longer for the login. And here we go. Incomplete language support. Let's close all these boxes. Close this. Okay, well, here we go. Here's our new operating system. This is Lubuntu, a super lightweight version of Ubuntu. You got a web browser here. It's Chromium. It's the open source version of Google Chrome. And here we go. It's opening up. Let's go to Google. Yes, we know. Google.com. Make sure the internet's working. Apparently, it's not working on my computer right now. So I will fix that and I will. But yeah, the main part of this video was to show you how to get Linux installed on your media server. Because that's what we're going to be using to set everything up, like I said a bunch of times before. So once you're at the screen, that means you're good to go. If you don't have internet, that's not terribly important. But I'll ha show you how to actually set it up in the next video. So until then, I will see you all later. Enjoy your new Linux installation. And in the next video, I'll show you how to set up the server programs. Goodbye.